this time, we welcome our three-year anniversary of Force Fed Sci-Fi. Woo! And my name is uh, Sean Michael Culp, and along with me for this lovely mini-episode is my friend and co-host. I am the co-pilot, Chris Rupp. <laughs> How you doing, Chris? I'm good. I've just been thinking back on, you know, when we started this little project years ago now, and now here we are, we're three years on the anniversary of our very first episode. Was that Inception was our first dealie? Mm-hmm. It was the first one. And to think, like, we had originally conceived this show as, like, a general, like, topic discussion, you know, everyday thing podcast where we would just sit and talk with each other for an hour yeah we just kind of it started off as one of those just two guys getting together all right let's watch sci-fi movies and uh riff about you know different science and things we enjoy and god three years later here we are doing spielberg month (laughs) and it's 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 just a wild thing you know like i didn't I don't think, uh, at least I don't know if you did. We we're just kind of jumping on this and like seeing how far it would go, you know. Like we had that list initially with Major Samantha, and I was like, "All right, <laughs> are we gonna run out of movies? Who knows?" And yeah, it's it's been quite a ride, quite a ride. I like all the changes, and um, you know, it's just a nice little po- nice little project here, and so. I don't know, I just kind of wanted to make a little episode about us, like, chatting about something exciting, you know? Just, like, commemorating some, maybe some special moments or movies that we reviewed and talked about. I think it's surreal in a lot of ways. I mean, thinking back on it, I mean, you and I have both grown, you know, personally and professionally, all while still... You know, maintaining this podcast, this project. And I mean, I even went back and looked at some of our episodes in the catalog. I think I started listening to Dread and just thinking like, God, that episode came out two years ago nearly. <laughs> and it's it's fun to kind of mark how vastly different our lives have become. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's it's been wild. Like, I think I remember when we first started, I was dating someone you were just beginning to date your now fiance and like (laughs) I'm now a sober man whereas before I used to drink on the podcast wasn't in school like it's crazy how like we've just changed so much over in just three years you know like you have your own crib now and I'm living in the city yeah and and I just think like personally too like I would I've certainly have had you know, moments that you've called me out privately on where I, I haven't given you the the proper avenue or way with the show. And, you know, it's been an adjustment for me because as you know me well enough. I, I could talk for hours and hours if nobody stops me. So there's <laughs> there's a lot of things that I've had to do to to allow myself the opportunity to step back and allow you the chance to really step forth and make this podcast yours as much as it is mine. Oh, yeah, we both have just grown and changed so much, right? Like, I think it's it's been for the better as we've really, like, kind of dissected and allowed our own personalities to really be interjected into this thing. And um, I don't know, just grow as people. Maybe it's because we're getting soft as we get older, you know, or just I don't know. <laughs> But I I do appreciate you for, you know, as the criticism as both of us are able to give each other and uh, try to fine tune this puppy, you know, so it gets a little, I don't know, I think um, life is about change and uh, we've made a lot of good changes on here. Yeah, and it's definitely fun to kind of think about, you know, because when we first started doing this, the show was originally called Bar Top Debate and then your cousin producer Jeremy really kind of came on and said like your show is kind of rudderless you don't have anything like real <laughs> that really kind of hooks people in you know to talk about mm-hmm. I remember that we we would just what do we do we did like two episodes or three just about like 
douchebag managers in the MLB and just like riffing on like sports and such. It was, it was wild. It was very wild. Well, and shows of that format are so hard to maintain because you have to, I mean, especially if you do a daily show, you have to find, you have to dig deep into the, the zeitgeist of what's going on across all major uh, topics. You have entertainment, general news, politics, sports. And it's so hard to keep a show like that running, you know, when it's just the two of us, two people and both of us had have, have full time jobs. So it's real hard to commit to another basically it was basically another full time job that doesn't pay anything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's and it it's like I know many, maybe you've thought about it sometimes where it's like, man, why am I doing this? Um, I know for me, I've always looked forward to recording, you know, and and it, there have been times where we haven't, where like my life, you know, would just get so chaotic. And I know when Jeremy was initially editing and producing the episodes, you know, his life was getting chaotic with other things. So he, you know, we couldn't get the weekly format out and I don't know, it's, I think the important thing that I've learned with doing this um, since I took over and probably both is you just got to take time for you and you got to be okay with like not beating yourself up. Like that's what I learned. Like if I can't get the same episode out, you know, each week, you know, cause life takes over. It's like, you know, it's okay. <laughs> I'm just going to edit. I'm going to do it when I can. And I'm not going to beat myself up or, um, you know, like dog myself because, uh, you know, people that enjoy the show, they'll tune in, and there's always growth, and people always listen. There's always going to be listeners. Yeah, and I, th- I think you hit the nail on the head. Like, uh, especially when we started this, I was still living with my parents. They both uh, have underlying health issues that required a lot of my attention. And then, you know, I, I kind of, I, I also got really into reading self help books, but in a couple of years before moving out, and I read one. I'm not going to list the full name the full title because it actually has a bad word in it but it's the subtle (laughs) art of not giving an f and let's just say the word rhymes with luck and that really kind of opened up you know my way of thinking and and it's not about you know committing yourself to so many different things but it's about picking the things that you're really passionate about and caring about those things and you know for me like my priorities in my life have become my home my future with my future wife Elizabeth and uh, and the life we build together, and then everything else is just kind of like okay, I will piece the time in for those things when it allows for it, and I will devote a hundred percent of my energy to that. But my priority is my future, um, my future life with my wife, and that's awesome too, by the way, because she. And that's like I commend you so much. I'm like number one that book. Because I've heard of that book, and I, I actually have yet to read it. But I definitely will give it a look. And I and I like that you've taken so much time to really work on that stuff. Because it really is so important in breaking life down to just being the simplest things that we can control and not worry. You know, like the less drama we have in our lives is like the simpler. And, and really honing in on those things that you care about. And so I've seen the success with you for sure. And it definitely... It it shows, absolutely. And Elizabeth is rad, so <laughs> it always helps, right, to have a good teammate. Yeah, she she's the best. She's amazing. She's the best fiance, future wife, uh, man could ask for. So I'm I'm very thankful that she's in my life and is a supporter Woo-woo. of the podcast and is a listener. Although I would call her a lapsed listener. And honey, if you do listen to this, you better listen to this episode. <laughs> I'm, I'm heaping some praise on you and calling you out at the same time. So I really hope you are listening to this one. I can, I can definitely hear Elizabeth being that's, that's great, Chris, but when am I going to be on the show? Oh my God. She still asked that. <laughs> she always asks that she what? wants to, and, but then she's like, well, why can't we talk about like Downton Abbey or something? I'm like, cause well, genetically engineered dinosaurs don't run through Downton Abbey and eat the servant staff. <laughs> Not yet. Not not yet. Not until someone makes that movie or TV show. Then maybe. I mean, maybe uh, we could watch like Pride and Prejudice Zombies or whatever. Is that a movie? That is a movie. I don't know if that fits into the whole 
um sci-fi genre though it's just i think it's more like gothic horror (laughs) right that that, that's a tough spin a tough sell i guess maybe zombies you know scientifically engineered i don't know i don't know that's a that's a tough that's a that's a magic bullet right there yeah it's it's like you know what do you call abraham lincoln vampire hunter is that a political movie or is that a vampire movie well i mean there we go. If we're going to do Pride and Prejudice zombies, I would say you have to do the Abe Lincoln versus Vampire. <laughs> oh, God. What? Um, and then just go for it. Go yeah. For but it. and then I think you were going to dive into this. And I'm sorry if I if I took it from you. But I think thinking in how we've grown as people and, and have evolved as well, the show has uh, evolved in sort of the same way. And I think a lot of it, the the things that we do now have sort of evolved organically from when we first started recording. Oh yeah, we I feel like we've totally evolved. You know, from what you know, even like I think the first like couple months we did more of a style of um it was almost like narrating the episodes and Jeremy gave us that great feedback of like, "Hey, how about instead of telling them about the episode, the movie, let's just, you know, talk about the things we enjoy and I think that was great because it definitely spurned a lot more conversation between us. But like even now with like different theme months have been great, you know, like that's that's exciting because we get to try out. I know I'm a big fan of directors now, you know, and like their stylistic choices. So like doing different themes has has really kind of opened my eyes to the different um I guess different types of art, you know, in cinematic history. And I'm really excited for like future, like if we do foreign movie month or, and whatever the heck else, you know, is out there. It's, it's kind of opened my palette to um, like just consuming movies and art as a person. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, doing this project is sort of, has definitely made me more open to trying different things. I certainly wouldn't have watched a film like Alphaville, if I weren't doing if I weren't doing this podcast or even a film like The Signal, I, I certainly wouldn't have uh, explored that or even the possibility of doing theme months, which I mean, I, I will admit I was a little hesitant to do. But like, God, we had so much fun doing <laughs> 80s schlock sci fi and it just felt right to go into, you know, another theme month afterwards and. And just looking at our, you know, our list in the past, I mean, we've done movies like Westworld, mm-hmm. Pitch Black. Um, we had our whole, you know, Star Wars uh, remake uh, trilogy there, or not remake, I guess sequel trilogy for uh, a little bit. We had a James Bond movie, for God's sakes, thrown in there. <laughs> uh, movies from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So we've uh, we've we've kind of been all over the place in terms of the the, the films we have done. Oh yeah, we've done the good and the bad, uh, and it's and it's wild to. I mean, I I mean some some of these movies have just been god awful, you know. As we've alluded to, like Howard the Duck, <laughs> you know, Sound of Thunder, you know, Battlefield Earth. But some of these movies have been there's a, been a lot of good gems. Um, I know, like much with like like you said, I probably would have never seen Alphaville either or The Signal. Um, Ad Astra that we saw in theaters and I don't think I would have seen that nor that um, Brightburn you know that was never anything that I would have checked out and I'm you know I'm pumped <laughs> with it you know because those are those are the good films like I, I like seeing things that are different than what I'm used to because it really opens my mind though I will say like you know it's it's always fun watching classics like E.T. or you know, like Jurassic Park, you know, those, those are always great. I mean, but if you had to pick like a favorite or like group of favorite episodes that we've done in the past, like what would you say like comes to mind for you? Gosh, you know, I really enjoyed, um, in terms of like group, I really enjoyed doing the alien series. That was, that was a lot of fun. Uh, checking all those out because those were things that I, those were movies that I never really watched. And I actually really enjoyed the Terminator. Um, those movies like that um, section B 
because I'd never really seen those either. Though I didn't see the new one, and I still have it. <laughs> but I enjoyed seeing the first one and the second one. Um, in terms of like standalone films, I gotta say, you know, Alphaville is still one of my top favorites. You know, despite it being like a foreign language in black and white. And um, yeah, I would say that one is pretty darn good. And then uh, recently, I actually really enjoyed Flash Gordon. <laughs> so for me, those are those are some standouts to me that's really just like shook me. Um, it shook my core. How about you? I mean, I I actually tell people this when you know when I meet people and I tell them that I host a podcast, and they say like, "Oh, what episodes have you done?" I always point to an episode we did early on. Um, the Spike Jones movie, her, I always think like that for me, like that's the first episode where you and I really kind of hit our stride. And Jeremy was on, on the, the episode with us and we were talking a lot about artificial intelligence. And that was really from like the first episode where we brought in a lot of real world science and a lot of research into that. And it's, there's, and it it's all packaged in a, in a gorgeous movie and our enjoyment and love for it really kind of came across in that episode and then i'm looking at our list right now and then the episode we did immediately after that was men in black so that was a <laughs> great group of episodes there um but yeah i'm i'm with you too like i love doing the alien series i love doing the rise of the planet of the apes series oh, yeah. um and then it's also fun too to like talk about the the awful movies you know a sound of thunder um lost in space uh <laughs> water world um and then oh, God. like because people ask too like oh do you just talk about the good ones like oh no we do we do the awful ones too like the sixth day um i, I don't know like the cell the cell is just a weird one i wouldn't necessarily call it bad it is just so out there weird. as hell <laughs> so weird <laughs> and then like the ones where like they're so bad it's good like eight-legged freaks or mars attacks mm -hmm. gosh those ones were fantastic the passion projects too like strange days yeah like <laughs> it's fun to look back at the at the list here because I, I keep a running list of um a lot you know episodes and when we cover them and you know just kind of looking at this list just brings back a lot of memories like you know, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Like, <laughs> I, like I fully remember my rating for that is like it because it pained me to just dump on that movie the entire time, and but then I watch a movie like John Carpenter's A Thing, and it's like, oh my god, it's such a masterpiece. God, that that's that one was so much fun too. The Thing, ah, oh, that made me appreciate eighty cinema so much more, and John Carpenter. Because I'd never really seen him. I, I totally agree with you, man. We, we've covered just so much. So many different films. From like time periods. And great special effects were terrible ones. And it's really, it's truly wild. I would say though, we've, we've covered Spielberg probably the most. Well, yeah, I think we definitely will, you know, by the end of uh, our Spielberg month. Because we've done Jurassic Park. We've done Minority Report. Um, Indiana Jones. Those, yeah, <laughs> him. De that one definitely. I, I, I almost forgot about that one. Uh, but yeah, we're definitely we're going to be adding four more Spielberg movies to this list here, and it's it's crazy to think of, like just how many sci-fi films he's dr not only directed but also been involved in as well. Because I'm pretty sure he was a producer on the Men in Black films and is also uh, involved in the new Halo series on Paramount Plus. So. Maybe possible we add in a we we discuss more television series here on the future of force fed sci fi. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I know that's um we something we delve into um with Space Force initially, and I know the second season of Space Force has recently come out on Netflix. So I know that's that's probably a cool goal for ours maybe in the future in the next couple of months to dive back into. Once we got some time just to check out some some cool TV shows, I would say, you know. Yeah, and I think now, especially where we could be could be entering a new, you know, fun age of science fiction, because 
you know, obvi- like Denny Villeneuve is um, cranking great science fiction out, like Blade Runner twenty forty nine, Arrival, and now the Dune remake, which won so many Academy Awards. Uh, and it would be, yeah, it'd be fun to definitely kind of go back to to television because that's uh, definitely an avenue we haven't explored so much. And there's so many great science fiction shows out there now. It allows much more freedom for sure for them to experiment. And and I definitely, that, I would like to look into that stuff too. And, and definitely even um, as we expand our palette to, because I know we did Acura um, and like WALL-E. I think those might be only there are only two like animated films that wasn't live action and and I'm I'm curious too to add some more like cartoons and stuff into our uh repertoire should I say because those are movies as well there's just so much so much out there There's yeah there's so much out there and we've always been open to recommendations or ideas that people have and if you know if you have a an idea for a future episode or a little known science fiction show that you think Sean and I should watch. Hey, send it our way. We'll give it a look and, you know, keep an eye on it. If it shows up in a future episode. Definitely. I, I am so down (laughs) because it's, that's always fun. You know, that's art. It's cool. Discovering art on like Wikipedia and watching it randomly, but it's also good to hear movies that people are uh, pumped for, you know, cause that's how, that's how you learn the most and you get to learn a lot more about people and what they like, which kind of brings us all together. So I'm excited, man. I'm pumped. Well, what do you, I mean, we talked a little bit about, but you know what we want to do on the show, but where do you see like this podcast going as we, you know, go beyond, you know, enter into year three. I mean, what do you, what do you envision down the road? I definitely, I know for me, I envision, I like the theme months, at least for now. That's kind of exciting because it gives us a chance to really hone in on, um, I don't know, we get like our own selection uh, instead of it being so random. But it also, we get to like have that genre, which sometimes with the randomizer, the number randomizer, Major Samantha, that can, we can kind of sometimes get duds after duds. (laughs) So having like a theme or something is always exciting to expand our palette. Um, I also, though, I know I've said it so many times, the one day brooch on social media to have a like a live review of you and I or something like that where we go to video media. It just depends on the time for me (laughs) when I because I'm so busy. And so are you to get together and be able to actually record something live action. Yeah, I I agree. That would be that would be fun to to do that experience, have a live, you know, podcast or live video, either it's, you know, Twitch or Facebook Live or whatever, you know, to to do that and connect with people in a different way. Yeah, definitely. Just to continue our our uh slow uh climb, <laughs> ascend up the social media and podcast tower how about you chris um you know like all vain podcasters i would love for this audience to grow and you know maybe turn people onto shows or movies that they may not have considered before you know like like we have with alphaville or the postman or dread or whatever um it's always fun to you know when we land on a movie that neither of us have seen before we get to go into it fresh and provide new takes and also too we want to you know maybe explore the possibility of having on more guests bringing back recurring guests people like you know maybe uh have jeremy definitely come back in a more regular role to to the podcast uh also bring back our friend brian mcleod he was great on our robocop <laughs> episode uh colin hope uh was his last name right mm-hmm. yep yeah he was fantastic on our moonraker episode and then jose rivera for our ghostbusters afterlife episode so we've we've been really fortunate to have some great and knowledgeable and insightful people be on this uh be on this podcast and you know i I think i speak for sean as well when i say we we thank you all enough if you've come on the show and provided insight and reviewed a movie along with us or if you've listened enjoyed our content 
or if you've left us a review i mean we we just cannot thank you enough for helping grow this show in some small way i absolutely agree with you chris and it has always been a pleasure as it always is to jump on here and just chat a little bit about our you know commemorate i guess and kind of reflect on our like three years of doing this and I'm really excited to hopefully have many, many more, you know, episodes and uh, many years ahead with you, man. So I, I, it's, it's been a pleasure, my good sir. It's been an honor. Woo! And it's been the same for me, Sean. I, like you, you've become one of my great friends over the last few years, and we share so much together. You know, both what's happening in our prof- uh, personal and professional lives, and I couldn't imagine a more knowledgeable and better co-host for this podcast oh you are the man chris thank you i i i greatly appreciate that and uh right back at you my good sir i've learned so many new words from you (laughs) (laughs) and you're in your robust vocabulary so it's it's been fantastic to hear these you know just spend time and uh dissect and challenge and uh challenge myself and learn a lot and you're wonderful you're you're a good friend as well you've become such a wonderful friend in my life so it's it's been a pleasure man it really has right back at you sean and uh i'll let uh i'll let you take us out with any (laughs) any final words any final words or affirmation you may have (laughs) oh and with that everyone just do your best keep coming back As always, if you uh, enjoyed this episode, come on down to our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, etc. Check us out on social media platforms, our website, forcefitsci-fi.com, or on all streaming services. Give us a review, give us a shout-out, and share this with anyone else. And uh, Hey, give us a shout-out, write, and maybe we'll review one of your favorite episodes. So it's always a pleasure for myself and for Mr. Chris Ruff. We will see you next time. 